Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sonali Gupta. I welcome you all on behalf of Federation of Indian Animal Protection Organizations to learn from the leaders' webinar on animal birth control in collaboration with Indian Immunologists Limited. PIAF is the collective voice of animal rights in India and is the catalyst that protects the interests of animals on local and national levels through research, education, mobilization, training, and direct action. We are an umbrella organization having 160 member organizations and more than 200 supported organizations and an extensive network of volunteers in the country. The World Health Organization has long recognized that mass disruption of street dogs is an in, uh, efficient and ineffective method of controlling dog population and animal birth control is the only scientifically proven method. The Honorable Supreme Court of India ordered the implementation of the animal birth control program to control the population of dogs in India. The court directed all the state governments to implement the ABC rules 2001 that require stray dogs to be spayed or neutered. This webinar is designed to throw light on the importance and effectiveness of the animal birth control program, implementation of ABC dogs rules 2001, and how to establish ABC centers in a district with government assistance. Now, I would like to introduce our esteemed speaker for this webinar, Dr. Ilona Otto. She is a veterinarian who started her career in a mixed animal practice in Finland in 2003 and came to India in 2004 to help a local charity called IPAN with their ABC programs. This work proved to become her passion and in 2009, she joined WBS, Worldwide Veterinary Service, as the clinical director of the WBS International Training Center, empowering and inspiring veterinarians to sterilize and vaccinate dogs. WBS India now runs two veterinary surgical training centers that provide uh, much needed skills training in the different aspects of ABC ARV programs for hundreds of veterinarians every year. In 2013, she uh, received the Kulpati Munshi Award together with her husband, Nigel Otto, for their dedicated work towards animal welfare. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ilona Otto, for joining us. I welcome uh, you to the webinar and request you to address the participants. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sonali. Thank you very much. Um, it is a it is a great honor to um, uh, to be talking again um, in the FIAPO um, FIAPO webinar. Uh, I'm just trying to share my screen first. Is this now visible? Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you're seeing my first slide, right? Okay. So um, I'll be talking about the, uh, some of the myths regarding APC programs or what I consider as a bit of a myth. A myth um, this is largely based on a talk that I gave at the FIAPA conference in Hyderabad two years ago. Um, so um, if, if any of you um, were there, then and this is uh, um, the topic and the content is, is, is rather, rather similar. Um, so starting, starting um, of course, first with a little bit of the definition. So what are we talking about when we are talking about animal birth control? So the aim, as per the name, of course, is to control the population growth, control the population growth of, of, of dogs and, and cats as well. But obviously we are talking mostly about dogs now in, in, in this context. Uh, so we are controlling the population growth by reducing the number of puppies and kittens that are being born and therefore eventually reducing the population of, of free roaming ownerless and unwanted dogs and cats. It's important to understand that both, both owned and ownerless dogs contribute to the birth of unwanted puppies, you know, when and dogs are left to roam free and, and, and meet, mate and breed, um, you know, um, without, um, without human intervention there. Uh, in rabies endemic areas like India, the control of population turnover is also needed to maintain adequate vaccination coverage. So these are the main, main aims and objectives that we really have with this animal birth control. So some of the common questions that we get about ABC programs, I'm, I'm not going to cover all of them in this talk because the time is short, but I'll just go through a bit of them. And if anybody, I'll go through these questions. And if anybody then has later on, you know, any further questions, then of course I'm available. Um, anybody can contact me separately and, and we can discuss these matters more in detail. So whether we are doing ABC surgery as a welfare intervention for individual dogs, or are we doing it as a public health measure? Um, what is aseptic surgery? Can it be done in India? 
what is normal or sort of acceptable post-operative complication rate, how many days post-operative care is required, how to assess when a dog is um, ready to be released, and finally, should pregnant dogs be operated? And this is the question I'm going to uh, focus on now today mostly. Starting now uh, a little bit about this APC rules. So APC rules 2001 revised 2010, everybody is aware of these rules, I'm sure. It's, a, it's really um, um, the acknowledgement of these APC rules in 2001 was a great landmark achievement for the welfare of roaming dogs. So, so really, um, all the credit for those people, those people from the animal welfare field who have been uh, involved in drafting and writing and getting these rules accepted. Um, so that's a really great achievement. Now, um, we often talk about how we have to go by the ABC rules, but I, and I just want to um, uh, bring up one particular paragraph um, of, these, of these rules, which I think we really, really need to be focusing on. And it is this one. It's a paragraph 5G, and it is relating to the functioning of the local committee set for the implementation of the ABC program. It says, keep a watch on the national and international development in the field of research pertaining to street dogs control and management, development of vaccines and cost effective methods of sterilization, vaccination, etc. So I find this is really important here because it, it basically acknowledges the fact that when these rules were written 20 years ago, people could not know what research knows today about dog population management and what methods will be available. So it's really important that when we set rules, we also sort of give ourselves the opportunity to modify our way of action as per the current available best practices, the best practices and the knowledge of the best practices. So now focusing with that thought in mind, that we need to be updating ourselves of the current, best, whatever are the most updated best practices. I'll, I'll get into this question of pregnant dog surgeries. So what does the AWPI SOP actually say? So SOP came out 2009, so nine years after these APC rules were written. And in the ABC, uh, in the AWPI SOP, there is this, this page with, where it says that animal birth control program is only scientifically, is the only scientifically proven method to reduce the stray dog population in a city or a town. And this is what Sonali also acknowledged just in the introduction that ABC, um, ABC is scientifically um, proven as a way to, uh, as a method to control dog population. So, the SOP gives references. Whenever you say that this something is scientifically um, proven, then obviously you need to give references to that. And there are three references um, in the SOP that are particularly related to this claim. And, and they are these um, that I have marked here. So there's a WHO technical report. There's an article by Jack Rees and Sunil Chawla from 2006. And there is a special report by the Association of Shelter Veterinarians. So if we go through them one by one. Um, this one is the um, article published in Vet Record in 2006. And in this article, uh, it says all fit females were sterilized, including animals more than three or four months old, uh, pregnant animals and animals in East Rivers. So the, um, it is well known fact that for ABC programs to, uh, to, um, to be successful, they have to be female focused. And this is very well acknowledged in this Jack Reese's article, which is one of the main um, scientifically uh, done, um, so one of the main studies that show how spay neuter programs are reducing dog population, free roaming dog population. And, and this, is, this, is an e, this is a reference in the AWPI SOP. The next one is the Association of Shelter Veterinarians. Um, this is an American article. And in this one, it says, for animals that are pregnant in Easters or have biometria, biometra, the task force's experience has been that neutering can be performed safely despite these conditions. And the WX, WHO expert consultation on rabies says on, in chapter 7.4, the rationale is to reduce the dog population turnover, turnover as well as the number of dogs susceptible to rabies. So what do we see here? We see that AWPI SOP is very much showing, uh, emphasizing that focusing on females 
is important. Focusing on females and operating pregnant dogs is recommended in the Rees article. It's proven as safe in the special report. And the WHO report is clear that the idea is to reduce the turnover as effectively as possible. Further on, what the SOP um, says is that, again, uh, as I've said, as, as we all know, we have to be focusing on female dogs. If we operate mainly male dogs, we, we, achieve, ve we achieve very little because the remaining males, there will always be some remaining males, they will make the unspayed females pregnant and you end up having as many puppies as if you did nothing. So fem it, it's always the females that we need to be focusing on. Um, uh, and there are several other paragraphs in the um, AWBISOB that, um, that talk about the importance of operating um, female dogs. So the reducing the turnover of free roaming dogs is essential for maintaining sufficient rabies vaccination levels. So this is the other part of the APC program. So why we do APC is partly for the individual welfare of those dogs, but, but also so that rabies control efforts can actually be successful. So that we have to reduce the turnover of dogs so that we can be vaccinating um, uh, adequate numbers of dogs every year. So if you have a population of 100 dogs and, and um, you sterilize them all, so they won't reproduce. And then after that, you basically just vaccinate them year after year. And then that area does not have rabies. I mean, that's a simple number example, but that's basically how, how it works. And, um, and control of rabies is the main public health reason why ABC ARV programs may be government funded. So the funding for mass ABC programs is mainly for public health reasons like rabies control and controlling of the act of the population, not so much for individual for the sake of individual welfare of an individual dog. Okay, so now I'll, I'll go. To, I'll take you through an um, um, easy number example to make you think about this this idea to reduce the turnover of free roaming dogs, which is the reason. Uh, why WHO recommends um, ABC programs. So if you have received 50,000 rupees as a sort of a first part of an earmarked grant to control the population of 100 female dogs, that would represent about 50% of the free roaming female dog population in a local panchayat. Suppose out of these 100 dogs, 20%, that's 20 dogs, are visibly pregnant. If you don't operate them, and you just let them have the puppies in your facility, you may end up with 100 new puppies, which you have to keep with the mothers until they are um, old enough for rehoming, which is about 10 weeks at least. So the dog breeders rules will then apply for you as well, since these puppies were born under your care. So you of course need to then spend on the feeding, cleaning, deworming, vaccination expenses and all that. And then you need to rehome them. And um, suppose 50% of these 100 new puppies are females. And um, even if you get all of them rehomed, you rehome them before they operate it. What guarantee you have that you get them for surgery before they have become pregnant and produced unwanted puppies? And while you're doing all this, taking care of these puppies and finding homes for them and all that, the remaining females out on the streets have reproduced because you, know, you had no time yet to take them in for surgery. You also want to think, what are the other reasons that may make look, may, um, sorry, that can make a um, dog to look like it's pregnant. We've had a number of cases where somebody thinks, oh, this dog might be pregnant. Actually, it's not. It has a tumor or it has a pyometra you know, or it has a dead fetus inside that is um, partly through the uterus and partly in the abdomen and all wrapped into the intestines and everything, you know, and, you know, something that would cause massive suffering for that dog if it wasn't operated. Um, yeah, so 100, 100 puppies is, of course, based on the idea that five, each uh, female would give birth to about five puppies, can be a little more, can be a little less. Um, and, uh, and suppose your funds are specifically for the APC targets, then where does the money come to, to for all this other work? Are you cutting 
are you cutting then from your target numbers to to make up for the extra extra uh, expenses of taking care of these puppies or or how does it work um, we also need to think about the puppy mortality in kennels so probably you can't rehome all 100 puppies because many of them die before they are at the at the age of at the right age to be rehomed and, and because everybody is busy with this, there is no space, no staff to do ABC because the puppy care is so demanding. So, yes, I understand this is an easy number example. Anyway, if we think of, if we think through these type of um, the easy numbers, it might be easier to understand what is actually happening if we don't operate these pregnant dogs. So final results. So after six months, you've been able to go through three cycles like this explained. You have operated 300 females, but you've also given out to the community 200 to 300 new puppies, approximately 50% of them females, and mostly not operated. Remaining dogs also breed and reproduce. Public notices no difference in the dog population because there is no difference. Municipality Panchayat begins to question your program and the efficiency of ABC. And in the worst case scenario, Next dog bite incidents results in mass killing of innocent dogs, and some of the, these you had already operated and vaccinated. You are unable to stop the killing because you have not shown to be able to provide an alternative. Another example, looking at just one day's work. So suppose 15 dogs have been caught, and then five are noted as pregnant, and as per then the protocol of the particular center, these are then sent back to the street. So 10 dogs are operated, maybe five males, five females, but those five that were sent back will give birth to puppies, about 30 puppies, you know, within a couple of days or weeks. So you operated 10, but there are 30 more out there basically because of your actions. So what is the closing balance on dog population management of your day's work? Negative. Your work has made no impact. So Please understand that there is no scientific evidence that, that this kind of a program would ever have any impact on dog population control or rabies control. And if there are many similar reports coming to the officials from around the country, then the pressure to change the law and rules that presently protect the stray dogs might increase. If rabies disease is not shown to have impact, then suppose these supportive laws will be taken away. So we need to think who are the ABC rules serving in, you know, in that case. So rather than losing the ABC rules, should we go for 2020 revision and, and, and rephrase or, or remove the sentence that, that um, uh, says not to operate pregnant dogs? Especially because it's in a contradiction to the AWBI SOP. So yes, of course, in an ideal world, we can run an effective education program and follow up on adoptions to ensure that all adopted puppies come back for surgery in time. And of course, we can develop our shelter facilities to decrease puppy mortality, uh, uh, you know, uh, due to stress and disease transmission because of overcrowding. Although that is in the ideal world, yes, that would be great. But the reality is that funding for sustainable ABC is not easy to get. And there's a need for good spay neuter services all around India. It's a huge need for that. Shelters with great education programs and all the best facilities, they may exist in cities, but not all over India, not in rural areas, not in small towns. And most APC programs rely on the government funding, which is earmarked so much per dog. And it's just really enough for that, not for additional activities that, that, that would happen on the site. So the feedback that I've been getting from the field and from some of our participants uh, regarding this, why some places they object on operating pregnant dogs. Uh, the feedback I get, people say that it's because of fear of activists or because they need to up the surgery numbers. You know, it, may, it, it might take, you know, at the same time that you would operate the pregnant dog, you can operate three male dogs. So then the surgery numbers at the end of the day look better if there are three male, male dogs done and, and then the pregnant female was not operated, but let, you know, sent back to the streets. But this is, of course, totally crazy and does not support the dog population management uh, objectives at all. 
Some some have said that they they they're afraid that they would run, that the, 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 their area would run out of dogs and and therefore they would be out of business. And then people just simply say, oh, because it's against the ABC rules, without actually thinking who the, these rules are supposed to be serving and, 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 and who has written them, the animal welfare people, for whom? To save the, save the innocent, healthy dogs, you know, from these indiscriminate killing, um, uh, killing uh, missions. So ABC rules has this sentence that irrespective of stage of pregnancy, uh, female dogs should not be operated. Now, this is an entire contradiction to every any scientific uh, guidelines and, and evidence that there is about the success of ABC programs. And it also, if you think of it, any free roaming female dog about the age of five to six months is potentially pregnant, you know, probably conceived a few days ago. So this makes, this sentence makes entire ABC programs quite impossible if we really follow that. But that is why I said in the beginning, the good thing about the ABC rules is that it has that paragraph about following and updating, following the international development and research, you know, and looking for the more updated ways to do cost-effective spay neuter. And this is where I think that's what we have to be following ABC rules. And that's what the AWBI SOP is luckily also following. Um, we also, of course, uh, we do, I do respect veterinary surgeons' own ethical views. So in our programs, always, if, if, if somebody would have a problem in operating a pregnant dog, they don't need to do that. Um, I haven't ever come across that, any vet having an ethical problem with it, though. Um, but I would, I, I, oh, I am open, open to that, that uh, for sure. Um, regardless of these different ethical views, the technical and scientific facts about the need to have a female focus program for the dog population control to be truly cost effective, these are facts. So, um, I would like to just sort of leave some discussion points. I'm not sure how much time um, there is at the moment. I have another topic that I can go through, that is the post-operative care, um, uh, if there is time for it. But, you know, just I would like the audience to think about, you know, if we're thinking of the ethical view, ethical issues here, um, uh, not giving the unwanted, unborn puppies the right to live is not the only ethical problem here. I know there are ABC programs that do not operate pregnant dogs, but then they euthanize the puppies when they're born. I do think that is an ethical issue as well. Um, I also think it's an ethical issue to use public funds meant for ABC if there is no reduction in the population um, actually achieved. Uh, because of, of, as I showed in those easy number examples, if you don't operate those pregnant dogs, you just end up, they just end up having puppies and you keep operating and you're never getting anywhere. And the, uh, suppose there is a mass call of healthy, perhaps operated and vaccinated dogs versus pregnant dog surgery. So which one is causing least suffering? Puppies, unborn puppies are unconscious and already dead with the anesthetics that we use for spay to surgery. So there is really no suffering in, in that case. There is no suffering. It's not a welfare issue. It may be an animal rights issue if that is considered important here, but it is not really a welfare matter for the dogs. However, mass cull and uh, killing, um, killing otherwise healthy dogs, you know, the brutal way of killing, that is a welfare issue as well, if, that, if, if it's a painful death. And the mortality rate of rescued puppies in shelters, you know, so, so that this is more complex question than just to say, oh, we can't operate pregnant dogs because ABC rules say so. Um, if, if needed, let's work on changing that rule for the benefit of the dogs. So I um, bring this up here again. So this is the paragraph five in the ABC rules, keep a watch on the national and international development in this research um, related to, um, to ABC programs. And, I, and my, um, my hope, my suggestion, my, you know, um, dream is that we can um, have a new revision of the APC rules where it would be more clear that female focused approach um, is needed with acceptance that pregnant females would be operated if aim is for cost effectiveness 
that we would have a systematic area-wise approach rather than haphazard rescue complaint based, which is at the moment what the APC uh, rules also includes that, um, that it should be complaint based, which is not necessarily um, the right way. Um, also, I find it's important that the operating veterinarian has there is it's their own professional responsibility for updating their skills and knowledge to ensure good quality surgery. Um, also, dog feeders have a responsibility to cooperate with sterilization programs and feeding without sterilization vaccination is not to be encouraged. Um, and then there is a need for annual uh, plain mass vaccination and street by street approach for, for rabies control. So these are matters that I, I uh, uh, would like to, um, to include into a new revision for APC rules if um, such a revision would be taking place. Um, uh, so this is a co another very common question. How many days post-operative care are required? Now, if we start to think what are the reasons for hospitalization in general, um, it would be if an animal ha requires daily IV medications or it's on daily IV fluids, or there is a daily bandage change, you know, large critical injuries, um, if there would be nasogastric tube feeding or requirement for cage rest after orthopedic surgery. So these are re reasons for keeping animals in hospital um, conditions in, in confinement. Unnecessary long hospitalization will, re uh, will increase um, complication risks. It will increase risk of hospital infections. It delays healing. These are free roaming animals. They will be stressed. They will be bored. Um, there is higher uh, disease pressure. And in human medicine surgery also the trend is towards less hospitalization. You know, you can even give birth in a sort of a polyclinic setting. So again, going to the AWPI SOP, what does it actually say about the post-operative days required? I've included here the paragraphs that um, somehow touch that topic of post-operative day, uh, um, the number of post or the, the type of post-operative care required or the length of the post-operative care. There's no need for me to read through them, but I hope everybody can um, uh, just sort of um, get the idea of what the SOP is um, saying. Um, and, and, and the thing to, to, to pay attention here is that um, any particular number of days. Uh, here, the, uh, the point four, for example, uh, it, um, emphasizes this idea of, um, of a system which we are using in, in all our programs, it's the morning rounds and, and wound scoring. So a system of having the operating veterinary surgeon to check surgical patients and, and, and then we use a system where we, um, uh, we give the, the wounds a score and based on the score, the, uh, the doc is then um, um, marked um, as, as ready for release. So, um, so this is really important. So the need for daily checkup by a veterinarian and need for the recording system that can be applied and um, uh, and um, our system we have uh, published it in this article that I have given here reference it explains through, um, the wound scoring so I will go through this bit more faster since I don't have so much time but back to this what AWPI SOP says so the point five refers to situations where external sutures are used. So this was, uh, this is where it says that uh, the dogs are kept until the, uh, the stitches are removed after seven days. However, the up-to-date standard is to use absorbable and intradermal sutures that do not need to be removed. So there is no need to keep the dog for, for seven days for suture removal when there is no suture removal. And there is really no other paragraph. So other than what I now showed on those slides, there is no other paragraph in the SOP that would refer to a specific number of days of post-operative care required as a standard. There is some recommendation regarding uh, using post-operative antibiotics for three to five days, but it also luckily acknowledges that the choice of antibiotics and analgesics is to be um, decided by the veterinary surgeon. And also, again, we have to understand that there are other sources of information in the world. So as per the international up-to-date guidelines for responsible use of antibiotics, for example, by a WHO and SAVA and the special report by the Association of Shelter Veterinarians, which is referred in the SOP, antibiotics should not be used in procedures like routine spay-neuter surgery. So again, it is not 
appropriate to, you, to keep the dogs for the sake of five-day antibiotic course after spay-neuter because you shouldn't be using antibiotics after spay-neuter surgery. It is not good veterinary surgery. So um, what we need to be, uh, what we, are, we need to be looking at, what are the low risk of, of minor surgical side information and postoperatively when released as soon as possible versus the high risk of morbidity and mortality due to distemper and so on when kennel too long. So our focus should be on quality surgery to minimize pos all possible surgery related complications, you know, and so that we can release these dogs as soon as possible. So we shouldn't be um, we, we shouldn't be covering up our uh, uh, complication rates by increasing our kenneling times. And we really should be a unified front for the dogs. And we should be promoting high volume, good quality surgery APC, APC programs for birth control. Accept that spay neuter as a welfare intervention to smaller number of dogs is good. But like I said, understand that wound opening will happen equally in the kennel as well as on the street if the surgery is badly done. Solution is to do better surgery, not increase kenneling times to cover up high complication rates. And here I still want you to, to sort of show the, the difference between animal birth control as a population, as a population management tool. So it, it should be female focused approach, um, uh, for rabies control, it's a public health intervention, and for such a program, government funding is possible. We can also spay a dog for the individual dog welfare reason. In that case, we are not aiming for changes in the population numbers. We are doing it for individual rescue dogs, for pets, as part of shelter management, for adoptions. We can, we can do it with private fundraising, but these kind of programs are usually not government funded because they don't have a public health um, uh, aspect in them. So um, I, I think now I'll be slowly running out of my time, but, um, um, but really there is no standard number of days required that would be right in all cases. The influencing factors, factors are the wound score, pain score, any other injuries, other medical conditions that are that the, um, the animal has and ownership, of course. We have lots of owners bringing their dogs uh, you know, every day for surgery. And they, of course, also take their dogs the same day. So letting a dog go away from the hospital on the same day is very much possible as long as the owner is there to pick it up. Um, male or female dog, of course, can also affect a little bit. And, and if there is any other, if there was any complications during the surgery, also the catching and release vehicle schedule and logistics is, is another factor that may influence, you know, the number of days that they end up being in the kennel. Um, so that's, um, this is, yeah, okay, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll end here. This is our wound scoring um, system from zero to five. Zero means perfectly healing wound, edges are in opposition. One is mild redness on the edges of the incision, no discharge, no intervention required. Two is some swelling or discharge, um, mainly just cleaning of the wound is required and the dog is not released, ready for release if it has a score two. Uh, then we have three as partly open skin and then four skin fully open and so on. So um, mostly we um, all our dogs score um, um, zero, one or two, sometimes two, but mostly zero and one um, on every day that they are with us. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it here because otherwise I'm going over time for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rizona. Uh, for informing us on Animal Welfare Board of India's SOP on animal birth control, but it actually says, especially in regards to pregnant and female dogs and uh, young pups, by is ABC done for the welfare of the dogs? How it reduces the turnover of uh, free roaming dogs, rabies elimination, public health reasons, and why ABC must be mostly government funded? And uh, you know who are these rules uh, serving and throwing light on ethical view of ABC towards dogs and public at large? Because at times we receive a lot of um, queries that animals have rights and why are they being sterilized. Whereas uh, at a larger uh, picture, we can uh, figure it out that uh, sterilizing, uh, sterilization of dogs is not only for the welfare of the dogs, but public at large as well. And uh, thank you for sharing us uh, with, uh, the system-wise area approach and how it can work effectively. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Uh, now I would like to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Ashutosh Joshi, Joint Director, Animal Director, Department of Animal Husbandry, Government of Uttarakhand. Sir has studied veterinary sciences and got commissioned to uh, Uttar Pradesh Public Service Commission 1997 batch. He has served as a veterinary officer at various government veterinary hospitals of Uttar Pradesh Government and Uttarakhand Government. At present, he is serving as Joint Director, Animal Welfare, Department of Animal Husbandry, Government of Uttarakhand. He is deployed as Officer in Charge, Uttarakhand State Animal Welfare Board, headed by Honorable Minister, Animal Husbandry, Government of Uttarakhand. He is contributing as a Member Secretary, Uttarakhand State Animal Birth Control Monitoring Committee, headed by Secretary Urban Development, Government of Uttarakhand. With regards to various animal welfare issues, Sir has been communicating and coordinating with Animal Welfare Board of India, NIAW, Rashtra Kamdhenu IO, CPC, SCA, MOE, FCC, DCI, DADF, FSSAI, CWDB, uh, WII, and other national level bodies of uh, union government. With regards to various animal welfare activities and programs, he has been coordinating with various concerned departments of Uttarakhand state government, district administration, and animal welfare organizations of state and uh, uh, pan India. He is serving as resource person for various animal welfare workshops dealing with animal welfare laws and legal provisions. He has been contributing regarding inputs advice related to framing and amendments in acts, rules, notifications, government orders, and policies dealing with animal welfare legal provisions in the state. He has also been contributing regarding uh, inputs advice to state government in various cases under trial in the Supreme Court, High Court dealing with animal welfare issues in the state. Sir has been elected as the General Secretary for Uttarakhand State Veterinary Services Association continuously since the last 15 years. One man wearing many hats. Sir, we are blessed to have you among us today. We welcome you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Sonali. Feel so grateful to FIAPO to provide me opportunity to share my inputs uh, on this uh, series of capacity building knowledge sharing webinars which are being organized under the Rabies Free India campaign of Federation of Indian Animals. <laughs> organizations and 200 supporting organizations like me. Uh, my topic for the day that has been allocated to me, that is the establishment of ABC campuses and program implementation as per the ABC rule 2001. One thing I shall accept that is a bitter fact that most of animal welfare programs which are being implemented in our country have come through judicial activism. And once we talk about the judicial activism or, or the law of the land, we have to have some basic understanding of the law so that we can push for establishment of new ABC campuses in our locality. Let me bring in your information that until the year 2001, under the provision of municipal acts and the Panchayati Raj Act, the local bodies of urban area and the rural area were killing the stray dogs to control the dog bite cases and rabies cases. On 24th December 2001, on recommendation of OIE and WHO, Government of India brought this ABC Animal Birth Control Dog Rule 2001 under Section 38 of the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960. That is the law of the land. As per this new law of the land, stray dogs cannot be killed by the municipal bodies or the rural local bodies, and they cannot be relocated out of the uh, limits of the local bodies. We have to catch the dogs in a humane manner, go for surgery, ensure proper prospective care, proper anti vaccination, and release back in the same locality from where the dogs were picked up. If we talk about the ABC facilities, which are being used as on date in our country, we have five models, more or less. The first model that was, that is 100% NGO funded model, where ABC campus has been established by the NGO and 
the expenses on the implementation of the program is being borne by NGOs and NGOs are contributing uh, are getting the funds through the contribution of from donors or CSR or from foreign donors that way. Second model that is also available in our country that is the corporate funded model under CSR where the corporate houses are uh, some of the corporate houses are sponsoring for the construction of ABC campus and implementation of the program. Third model that is most frequently available model in our country that is the model where 100% funding is being done by the local body. That means the local body of the urban area that is Nagar Nigam or Nagar Panchayat or Nagar Palika or local, local body of the rural area that means Gram Panchayat or Chhetra Panchayat or Jila Panchayat. The fourth model that is the model where there is participatory funding where state government is providing funds for construction of ABC campuses, procurement of the documents, procurement of the logistic supports, and implementation of the program and some funds are being provided by the local body and fifth the best model i feel that is the participatory funding between the state government central government that means animal welfare board of india providing funds under section 9i of the pc act and local body uh, out of these five models i find that model number five is the best model initially in our uttarakhand we were implementing the program through this model now because of there is, there is lack of funding uh, funds available with awbi we are adopting the fourth model that is the participatory funding by the state government and the municipal bodies of the state i find if there are multiple stakeholders that means central government and state government and the local body there will be better accountability there will be better supervision and there will be better assurance of the implementation of the legal legal provisions and there will be better availability of funds as well so i feel that we must uh, promote for the fifth model or if it is not possible because of lack of funds with AWI, then the fourth model definitely we have to promote. We must promote. How to promote that I will discuss. If we say that law of the land is to be implemented, law of the land means law that has been designed by government of India, that is ABC 2001, and the various orders from Honorable High Court and Honorable Supreme Court of India, those are to be implemented. So just to ensure the implementation of the legal provisions, we must have basic understanding of the judicial system of our country. In our country, we have three sorts of courts. The Apex Court is Supreme Court of India. Then we have got high courts at state level in every state, and we have got district courts. In district courts, we have two types of courts. Uh, first one are the magistrate courts, where we find judicial magistrate or ACGM or chief judicial magistrate. And another type of court at district level, we have appellate court, that is the additional decisions court or decisions court. So this, this is the judicial system. So as the protocol of the judicial, judicial system goes, there are high courts to ensure the implementation of the orders of the Supreme Court of a country. And similarly, there are district courts who often, uh, where we can approach for the implementation of the uh, uh, verdict of the Honorable High Court or the high, higher apex Supreme Court. So this is the system we have available. Secondly, we do have a uh, state human rights commission also where plenty of people are approaching uh, to get the orders of Supreme Court and High Court implemented. So they are, they are, they are, they are a system from where uh, we can, uh, we can uh, challenge the machinery that they must, uh, they must go for this program. Then we have to understand the government system because we very well realize that through CSR funding or through corporate funding or through NGO funding, uh, or through municipal body funding, uh, the program is not really going to click in mass scale. And um, I, I doubt that despite in the year 2001, the ABC rule were framed by government of India, I doubt that still we have any remarkable impact of this program in our country. Because when at peak, it was flourishing like anything, we were hardly able to do surgery of around two lakh or three lakh surgeries per year. Considering the straight dog population of a country to be three crore. So such a big number of straight dogs, if those are to be covered, definitely state government has to uh, take uh, its part, central government has to take its part, and municipal bodies, they have to take its part. The basics about the government machinery is that, that we have got union government, that is central government, and parliament. Parliament is providing us the central acts and rules. Then we have got state government and legislative assembly. State government is providing us state acts and Assembly is providing us the state acts, and central state government is providing us funds uh, uh, under various ministries 
for various programs. Then we have got local government that we say that Nagar Nigam or Nagar Palika or Nagar Panchayat or Jila Panchayat or Chhedir Panchayat or Gram Panchayat. And we have got board of these local government who have got authority to frame the bylaws and provide the funds for the schemes. So this is the government machinery. Then we must have the basic understanding of the law of the land. Law of the land says that the topmost protocol that belongs to the articles under the constitution of our country. Then there is protocol for acts. Under the act, we have got plenty of sections and subsections and clauses and clauses. Then under the acts, we get some rules. Under the rules, we may get some government policies or government order or government notification by state government or central government, or maybe by local government. Then we have got office orders. The thing is that whenever there is rift between, there is dispute between article, that means constitution of India and an act. Article or constitution is going to prevail. Whenever there is dispute between act and rule, act is going to prevail. Whenever there is dispute between rule and government order, act rule is going to prevail. And whenever there is dispute between government order and the office order, government order is going to prevail. That is the basic protocol of the government machinery that we have to understand. These things are going to come in the picture when we are going to discuss the further slides. Thing is that, that if we feel keenly that this ABC program must be implemented in every locality of our country, then definitely we have to convince the machinery that why this ABC ARP program must be implemented for state dog population control. We have to go with the line that it is the law of the land, that is the ABC dog rule 2001. We have to comply with the orders of high courts, state human rights commission and Supreme Court of India. And definitely uh, we have to give our representation to the local body authority, to the state government authorities. And once we give the representation, we can send a copy of our representation to the electronic media or print media or even social media so that we get good ideas, positive ideas from our fellow friends. Then we have to persuade with the authorities that there has to be some digital system to address the panic because of the dog bite cases. And social financial, socio financial impact, the sheer panic in the society and financial losses that government is going to make, country is going to make, the locality is going to make because of these dog bite cases. Because ultimately, whenever there is dog bites, we have to manage it. We have to invest for management of that thing. Now I'll bring a few landmark developments while this implementation of ABC rules came in the picture. In 2008, from Bangalore, Bangalore High Court gave a verdict that uh, municipal act is an act and ABC rule is a rule. So whenever we have to see the protocol, act has to prevail over the rule. So act will prevail, municipal act will prevail, stray dogs can be killed on mass scale. This order we got in 2008 from Bombay High Court, and it was stayed by Honorable Supreme Court of India uh, on 23rd January 2009 under the SLP number 691 of 2009. On, that was filed by Animal Welfare Board of India. Similarly, we got one more order in 2012 from uh, Bangalore High Court. Same thing was again repeated that act has to prevail, mutual act has to prevail over the ABC rules, and dogs can be killed. Mass killing of the dogs is okay. That too was again stated by Honorable Supreme Court of India on 6 February 2013. That is a citation we can give to our authorities. That way I'm sharing with you uh, these inputs. A similar order we got from Shimla High Court, where Honorable High Court of Shimla gave the verdict that all the stray dogs must be relocated out of the limits of Shimla Municipal Corporation. Uh, it, it happened in year 2013, and that order was challenged in the Supreme Court under the same SLP, number 691. And on 10th May 2013, we got this landmark stay order from Honorable Supreme Court of India that stray dogs can neither be located nor be killed under the Municipal Act, and we have to implement the ABC Rule 2013, uh, ABC Rule 2001. This SLP number 691, of 2009 that has been filed by AWI in Supreme Court of India. And in this SLP, SLP is the case where somebody loses the case in High Court and appeals in Supreme Court. That is called SLP, special leave petition. In this SLP, uh, we got three beautiful verdicts, beautiful interim orders from Honorable Supreme Court of India. On 18th November 2015, we got 
a landmark direction from honorable supreme court of india that central legal provision will prevail over state legal provision since municipal act is a state act that has been passed by the state legislative assembly that by state government hmm. and this abc rule 2001 has been framed by government of india that is the union government under a central act that is the pc act prevention of food and animal act 1960 the central legal provision will prevail over the state legal provision okay so now that is the law of the land that and one more thing very very peculiar thing that has been given by honorable supreme court that no high court will pass any orders relating to abc rules killing of the stray dogs in mass scale or mass scale relocation of the dogs we have to go by the abc rule 2001 then honorable supreme court gave interim order that every municipal body or local body he has they have to frame a committee under rule 4 of the abc rule for the implementation of the program they have to provide abc campus it is their sacred sanctity they have to provide dog vans and they have to provide all the infrastructure and the logistic supports and they have to implement the program there are few state there were few state governments who were not at all keen to go for implementation of this program and who were not very well convinced with this abc rules and who were saying that we have got shortage of funds so they were saying that we are not willing we are not in position to implement the program so honorable supreme court gave in this uh, in this order of 18th now now november 2015 gave this direction that you have to tell us the number of dog bite cases in the year 2014 15 and what efforts you have made so this is a very peculiar line that if we can work out the number of dog bite cases in the last financial year in a particular state or particular district definitely we can say this was the number of dog bite cases this was the amount we have invested on the vaccines on the logistics Uh, on the management of the panic and this was the dog bite cases uh, in the in the animals this was this, this was the mortality in the animals and human beings and this much loss we have already occurred and we must have some legal system to address this problem so that way we have to pursue with the authorities then honorable supreme court of india gave one more interim order on 9th march 2016 as per that order honorable supreme court directed that every state government has to file an affidavit to the supreme court that what we have done for implementation of abc program what is our action plan and in the same order honorable supreme court gave directions to animal welfare board of india to frame module for program implementation through active participation and communication and discussion with the state government authorities and union government authorities and uh, the sop that was being discussed by dr ilona author my co partner that has been edited as per this new module uh, that uh, that has been designed by awbi in compliance with the orders of honorable supreme court of india and this module has been filed in supreme court and has been published by awbi it has got slight differences slight editing uh, and showing the uh, version of state governments as well and central governments as well the, how the program should be implemented on 17th november 2016 honorable supreme court gave this verdict that there has to be a central abc monitoring committee under the union government there has to be a state uh, abc monitoring committee under the state government and there has to be uh, local body level monitoring committee as per rule 4 of the abc rules and all the concerned departmental officers are to be included in these bodies that means the ministry of urban development ministry of rural development and panchayat raj ministry of health and family welfare for humans ministry of animal husbandry and dairy and an animal welfare board of india state animal welfare board and district associations of course so they have to play their role for the constitution of these uh, abc monitoring committee at apex level national level at state level and at district level at national level we have yet to get that central monitoring committee that has been uh, prescribed in the module designed by awbi but yes uh, in uttarakhand and in plenty of other states i think in jharkhand i think in up uh, or in haryana in four five states definitely we have state abc monitoring committee that is being chaired by the secretary urban development of the state government of the concerned state we too we too have, have a similar state abc monitoring committee in our state in the meanwhile we got one more uh, verdict from honorable high court of nanital that is the state high court and as per that order uh, of 4th march 2014 honorable high court of nantal gave a verdict that secretary of urban development 
department has to make regular budgetary provision for the implementation of the abc program state government has to provide funds for construction of abc campuses we have to train our staff provide dog vans provide logistic support and we have not to go for any sort of mass killing or relocation of the settled dogs and since uh, there was uh, government was not very keen to implement the program then in year 2015 we got one more verdict from nental high court that for each dog by cases compensation of 2 lakh rupees is to be paid by the government 1 lakh by state government and 1 lakh by municipal body it was a panic in the state government we rushed to supreme court to get this high court order stayed but while we rushed to supreme court definitely we gave commitment to supreme court that what is our action plan and how we are going to implement the program in our state with our available limited resources this is the, this was the line of action how we proceeded with our state government to go for this abc program in whole state the first data that we have to quote that what was the human dog bite cases in the last financial year in the year 2014 15 uh, we informed to honorable supreme court of india that there were 49000 uh, uh, dog bite human dog bite cases there were no death in human beings because of rabies uh, and that and husband he reported that there were 7052 animal dog bite cases and there was 45 uh, there was death of 45 animals in the financial year and for pre bite and covid vaccination uh, our total uh, vaccination was 17544 45 in the financial year 2014 15 so that way we were able to convince to our state government authorities that already we are bearing with the financial expenditure on purchase of antiviral vaccination that is rupees 5 crore rupees that means 15 million hmm. and plus we are doing expenditure on logistics for these vaccines the refrigerators vans and stuff plus we are bearing losses of the animal and we are bearing with the panic created because of the dog bite cases in the animals and human beings so already we are making heavy investment and we have to bear with this this expenditure for ever this is never going to stop if we start if we go for systematic implementation of abc program maybe after 20 years or 25 years or 30 years when we will be able to cover our all the municipal bodies and whole state maybe thereafter we may not have the dog bite cases or rabies cases and we may be able to control the dogs to dog population this is the data of 2006 7 uh, that is the national data annual dog bite cases as reported by who is 19000 35% of the worldwide zoonotic death cases were because of rabies 10th most common cause of death annual dog bite cases in our country were around uh, 18 lakh and there was annual expenditure of 300 crore rupees as i expected that our expenditure was coming around 7 or 8 hour that was the expenditure load that was coming on our state government ultimately the state government was bearing that 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 is around 7 or 8 crore rupees so but national expenditure was coming around 300 crore rupees for management of the dog bite cases and anti rabies vaccination uh, protocols so in our country in the year 2006 7 we have we had 2.7 crore stray dogs as on date we have got more than 3 crore stray dogs we have to persuade with our authorities that why there is keen biting temperament amongst the dogs we have to tell them that there is hormonal impact in the breeding season definitely male dogs are going to go more aggressive because they have to chase and compete for the mating with the female and they have to leave their locality and once they leave their locality dog fight has to be there they have to more stress they have to be more dog bite cases similarly uh, in the case of females after the whelping after the pupping every female either human human female or a bitch sees going to have immense feelings of maternity because of that hormone production and just to protect her puppies from invaders she is going to attempt for dog bite even in the case of pet bitches they they also sometime attempt to bite their owners to save their puppies it is quite common if we go for mass uh, sterilization of the male dogs and female dogs uh, that uh, definitely there will be hormonal impact there will be less cases of dog bite cases because female won't get pregnant 
so they won't be having that impact of uh, feelings of maternity and males uh, shall go docile as it happens in the case of ox uh, bulls also once we sterilize it it becomes oxen and they, those are less aggressive similarly uh, while if you go for mass relocation or killing of the dogs definitely uh, dogs are going to have immense fright anger and excitement and every animal feels really keen to save its, its life and definitely they are going to retaliate they are they are going to be more cases of dog bites and in some cases some dogs are very smart and municipal bodies are not able to kill them they are going to have a special type of feelings for the human beings and they are going to definitely bite so that we have to accept that all the dog bite cases are not because of stray dogs 70% of the dog bite cases are because of the pet dogs the thing is that we have to persuade with them and we have to tell them that uh, number of stray dogs is increasing in a very high number because of the unwanted pregnancy of the female pets that means ki there has to be responsible pet ownership on the part of the pet owners they must get their dogs their females their males sterilized if they are not going to uh, get uh, work as breeder they are not uh, willing to get registered as under uh, um, dog breeding rules 2017 secondly heavy whelping of the whelping of the stray bitches that is also contributing for the immense increase in the stray dog population the mass killing is not at all going to be helpful that we have to convince our authorities we have done it because if we go for mass killing it it leads to better availability of the food and shelter and all sort of protein carbohydrate fats vitamins and there has to there, there is going to be better availability of the uh, nutrients and there will be better management of the pregnancy in the stray bitches so mass killing if you go for mass killing they will get better feed so again the population will come to the same number and if we go for mass killing definitely the dogs are going to get replaced by the from the uh, dogs of the nearby uh, vicinity so we have to persuade the authorities that mass killing is not at all going to be successful we have shared this example of chennai we have shared this example of rural australia and kathmandu all we know and then finally this was the conclusion of our our input to the authorities that the abc rule has been has been designed as per the who and oie recommendation that is the human scientific and practical solution for the problem that is the law of the land that has been ordered by the honorable supreme court of india and honorable high court of india and in the light of article 51 ag of our constitution of india we have to be kind to all the creatures in our ecosystem and we have to coexist together so we have to go for this human scientific manner and go for zero rabies and lesser conflicts between dog and animals and have a safer city so that way uh, we have to adopt the policy uh, our persuasions were accepted by the state government state government approved snd that is sanction of new demand hack actually what happens in state government authorities from directed of the urban development the proposal has to go to the state government that is secretary of urban development then in the office of secretary in the directorate we have got office of plenty of rank we have got assistant director we have got deputy director we have got joint director we have got assistant director we have got director then director is going to recommend the file to secretary secretary of urban development then in in secretariat we have got secretary then we have got assistant secretary then joint secretary then deputy secretary then under secretary then section officer then review officer then aro all these people are going to vet our file then it is going to go to the finance ministry then finance ministry again the same setup of officers is there is there secretary is there assistant secretary joint secretary assistant secretary under secretary so ro that is going to happen and once it is approved by the finance ministry then it is going to go to the cabinet from the cabinet is going to go to the legislative assembly from legislative assembly we are going to get the sanction of new demand hat approved by the state government budget so that yes in uttarakhand in the year 2016 for the first time we got SND book for the first time. Once the SND is booked by in the state government through the legislative assembly by the finance ministry, it is forever. Usually, such SNDs once they are booked, they 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 continue in the coming financial years. Then, as it was directed by Supreme Court of India, we framed our state ABC monitoring committee that is being chaired by Secretary of Development. We have got Secretary of Finance in that committee and Secretary of 
representing that committee. I am serving as member secretary for the state ABC monitoring committee. We have got municipal commissioners of all the eight uh, municipal corporations in Uttarakhand and district headquarter uh, uh, municipality EOs as a member. And one ABC member nominee can also be a member in our state ABC monitoring committee. And since Mrs. Gauri Maliki was petitioner against us in Honorable Nantal High Court, and she is intervener in this SLP number 691 that is being heard by Honorable Supreme Court of India, and they are getting entry orders from Honorable Supreme Court of India, and that is still uh, under the process at the level of Supreme Court. Uh, so just to provide fair enough uh, opportunity to the petitioner come intervener, uh, Gauri Maliki has also been included in our state ABC monitoring committee. This is the plan that we have, Excel plan that we have submitted in the Supreme Court of India that uh, we are going to implement this program in the phase wise manner. In first phase, we are going to cover the three municipal bodies that is Dehradun, Masuri, and Nantal. In second phase, we are going to cover the five municipal corporations. And in third phase, we are going to cover the uh, district headquarter municipal bodies. And in the plain area, as it has been uh, refunded in the module designed by AWBI, submitted to the Supreme Court of India. Uh, in a radius of 50 kilometers in the plain area, we are going to have one ABC campus. And in the hilly region, uh, in the radius of 25 kilometers, we have to go for uh, one ABC campus. Then this way we have to move forward. As I was saying that the fifth model uh, that says that participatory funding by government of media and state government and municipal body. So initially, when in, in the year 2016, we went for tripartite MOU with Animal Welfare Board of India, state government and local body. Now it really doesn't have funds. So now uh, we are not going for this tripartite MOU with the uh, Directly directions are being given from state government to the local bodies that 50% funds will be given by state government and 50% funds are to be contributed by the municipal body, local body. And all the expenses on the construction of ABC campus, purchase of dog vans, purchase of logistic support, all the, the, those expenses will be borne by the state government. And on program implement, implementation, uh, the, we have decided rates of 840 rupees per state of salary. Out of that 840 rupees, uh, 429 rupees will be contributed by the state government and 411 rupees are being contributed by the urban local body. So that is our model. We have uh, constituted uh, street dog birth control society in every municipal body where we are implementing the program. We have constructed ABC campuses in the first phase and in second phase also uh, at three places our ABC campuses like to get completed within two or three months. And then we have uh, in the first phase we have done selection of expert program implementation organization that is the NGOs who are going to implement the program for us who are going to conduct ABC surgeries mass catching and release of the state dogs. Uh, the NGO that we have selected through national bidding that is HSI India Human Society Intervention India uh, that that is providing training to our local government veterinary doctors training to our dog catching staff and implementing the program for us managing the dog bite cases for us managing the uh, venereal tumor cases for us so that. That MOU we have done the, with the, that EPIO, and now we have started the implementation of the program. Uh, I will not go into detail. In 20th August 2016, for the first time, in the, that was our ABC campus at Dehradun, that was inaugurated by Mrs. Menaka Gandhiji. She was minister that time in government of India. And uh, our urban development minister uh, was there, and mayor of Dehradun was there, so that was inaugurated. And from November 2016, we started the implementation of the program. This is our ABC campus of uh, Dehradun. Uh, this is our progress. Uh, in Dehradun, till yet, in last three and a half years, we have done 26,283 surgeries. At Masuri, we have done 885 surgeries. At Nanital, we have done 1,576 surgeries. Total, we have covered 28,744 stray dogs in last three and a half years. And in, in Nanital, we have covered more than 97% state dogs. At Masuri, we have covered around 50% state dogs. At Dehradun, we have covered around 70% state dogs. So we are still going to continue the program for uh, two more years. Uh, this is the performance of the satellite municipal bodies that it was that was decided by our Secretary of Development that for each municipal body, we cannot have an ABC campus. So as we have uh, submitted in our affidavit in Supreme Court of India, that in the radius of 50 kilometers in the plain area and 25 kilometers in the hill area, uh, all the municipal bodies are going to be covered by the same ABC campus. So nearby Nanital, we have got Bhimtal uh, municipality and Bhawali municipality. There we have started program implementation, and yes, we have covered around 30 or 40 percent state talks. Then we are going to cover uh, municipality.
municipality of Doiwala, municipality of Harbatpur, municipality of Vikasnagar also, we have yet to start the program from our ABC campus at Dehradun. Then at Almora also, we have done more than 600 surgeries and our target population is around, that is around 50% we have covered. Similarly, at New Territory Town also, we have done this. These are our five municipal bodies of the second phase, that is the Municipal Corporation of Haridwar, uh, Municipal Corporation of Rurki, Municipal Corporation of Vidurpur, Municipal Corporation of Kashipur, and Municipal Corporation of Haldwani. So out of these five places at Haridwar, at Rudrapur and at Haldwani, our ABC campus is more or less complete. Construction of ABC campus is more or less complete. Soon we are going to purchase the dog vans and purchase the logistic support. And then we are going to go for the national bidding and select the expert program implementation organization that is going to be an animal welfare organization uh, registered with the AWBI for mass scale conduction of the ABC program. So that we are going to go. This is our ABC campus at Dehradun. It is having a uh, good OT block. O uh, OT, OT is have, having four uh, operation tables, autoclave room, dressing room, medicine store room, general store, office record room, doctor's room, trainee vets classroom, and trainee vets hostel. So this is our, uh, these are our uh, kennels at ABC campus of uh, Dehradun. We have got 70 cells. That means we have around 140 animals staying capacity in our kennels. Each kennel is having size as recommended in the module of AWI. That is around five foot by six foot and height seven foot, having thermocool um, fall ceiling to uh, cover the extreme uh, climatic ch uh, 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 ch changes. And we have got tiles of around two and a half feet as been recommended by the module. And we have got slants. And this is our ABC uh, kennel cells. Uh, we are training our veterinary doctors. We have trained our, uh, till yet we have trained our 106 veterinary doctors of animal medicine department uh, through the same uh, EPIO, that is HSI India. Uh, because we feel that this NGO is not going to continue for, with us for life. Maybe after four years or two years or five years, it is going to leave. Thereafter, our own veterinary doctors, they have to conduct the program with a very slow pace, just one, two, three, four, or five, ten surgeries in a month, or maybe 50 surgeries in a month. But yes, we have to skill our own manpower also. Plus, we have to go for the uh, mass scale surgeries of the pet bitches as well, pet dogs as well. So that order has been uh, issued by our secretary, our government government, Uttarakhand, that all the municipal bodies who have undergoing this ABC program from last three and a half years, they have now to go for uh, providing the mass scale ABC surgery for the mass scale ABC surgery for the pet dogs as well. So that uh, we have responsible pet owners and we have controlled pet dog population so that unwanted pregnancy of the pet dogs doesn't contribute to the stray dog population uh, in our state. That, that this is our ABC campus of Masuri. This is our ABC campus of Nanital. This is our ABC campus of uh, Almora. These are our dog vans. All you people are very well aware, aware about this. This is the key. You people are well aware about this. I will not take too much time. Uh, uh, these are the male organs after surgery and female organs, both you can see in the slide. This is our operation table and this is the organ count being done by the, in the presence of a member animal welfare board of India. This is Dr. R.S. Chauhan. I'm a member secretary for the state ABC monitoring committee plus officer in charge for the state uh, animal welfare board. And third one is the municipal veterinary officer, is Dr. Sati, my junior. So this way we are doing organ count. Uh, we are um, uh, keeping 12 boxes, six boxes for female organs, six boxes for male organs, one box for Monday, second for Tuesday, third for Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday. On weekly basis, we are doing organ count. On weekly basis, we are uh, handing over the um, organs, that means male and female genital organs, to the uh, organization that is registered with the State Pollution Control Board to manage with the biological waste. This way we are doing the male organ count and based on male organ count and female organ count, the payment is being made to HSI India. These are the female organs being counted. You can see that uh, we don't uh, opt for the MTP, medical termination of the beaches. This is the, you all, all the guys know very well, this is the left air, no, air notch we saved to ensure that what is the state of population we have covered in our city. I can guarantee that in our Dehradun, if you start roaming in any part of city, you will find at least seven dogs out of ten that uh, uh, sterilized. You will, you will be finding the left ear notch uh, ha having V-shaped notch. 
same way in nanital if you try to you, you roam, roam around you will find around more than 90% more than 95% say dogs covered this is our abc campus having ot block kennel block dog bench training hostel and other extra facility these are the inputs which are required this i will not go in details perhaps you all know all these things this way we are planning that we have realized that in our tiny uh, hilly city we cannot establish construct an abc campus uh, in every radius of 25 km that is going to be too expensive for us because for the construction of abc campus of dera zone we have invested around 2 crore rupees for abc construction of abc campus of other big cities we are investing around 1 crore rupees for construction of even tiny abc centers we have to make investment investment of around 50 lakh rupees that is going to be too expensive now we uh, i i am persuading with my state government that we should go for mobile operation center so that is going to be economical for us that is going to be easier for us uh, that is going to be easier for the expert program implementation organization that is the ngo uh, we can tell them that for one and a half months you have to stay in this hilly township and cover the 90 percent population that way we are going to uh, move forward this is the mobile option theater we are planning to go for these are going to be our future uh, strategies special precautions i will not take so much time all you guys are well aware of about these things why we are doing the program how we are doing the program that is to be communicated in the local language uh, through banners and posters we are communicating the people in our area okay, what our action plan why we are implementing the program in the local language similarly these are the banner posters we are displaying at nanital for the mass adoption of the people this is an adverse order from honorable high court we got uh, this i am sharing from the point of view that uh, some of the human activists they filed a case in honorable high court and honorable high court gave verdict that move all the dogs in the shelters and kill all the uh, aggressive dogs in the city so these two things were not acceptable to us and we submitted our affidavit uh, to the honorable high court that Uh, these uh, lines are not uh, matching with the directions from honorable supreme court of india honorable supreme court of india has uh, requested all the high courts not to pass any order and if you have to pass any order you have to go for implementation of abc program not to, not to go not to uh, uh, recommend for the uh, construction of the, uh, of the dog shelters and moving the all the stray dogs from street to shelters relocation of dogs is not allowed and secondly uttarakhand is a hilly state and our hilly state in 62% of the cases uh, for the leopard the prime food in the food chain in the ecosystem is the stray dogs so if we are going to remove the stray dogs from the streets definitely there are going to be more human killings more killing of the ladies and children by the leopards so that way stray dogs are contributing a lot for the safety of human beings so we have not to remove the uh, stray dogs not to move, remove them not to locate them in the shelters we have to, we have to coexist in our ecosystem with our stray dogs that is the law of the land that is the order of honorable supreme court honorable high court has accepted our this point of view finally we are persuading and making appeal to the people that every body uh, in our city should go for adoption of the stray dogs similarly if we talk about the welfare of company animal definitely we guys must have a very good idea about the dog breeding in makri rule 2017 pets of rule 2018 care and maintenance of kids property animal rule 2017 adoption guidelines as per under rule 9 of the care and maintenance of animal rules 2017 citation from various high courts dealing with the colony caretakers and dog feeders and citation from various high courts and advisory guidelines dealing with the resident animal welfare societies and apartment owners associations so these these three things are very very important if we are working in the field of dog welfare not only the about the abc program we must have idea fair good idea about these legal provisions as well as well and always fiapo is there is known to for its dedicated still opportunity to store for consistently pushing for the a policy of knowledge sharing uniting together promoting cooperation and coordination and understanding between the animal organizations and government authorities so that way definitely through fiapo we all the people have to unite together and make efforts for a better future thank you very much you guys were kind enough to listen i am thankful to uh, advocate sujana nijar serving as senior advocacy manager in fiapo and advocate sonali gupta campaign coordinator for fiapo to provide me this opportunity and provide us this platform to share our views thank you very much
Thank you so much, sir, for enlightening us on various models for implementation of ABC ARV program, convincing the uh, missionary for its implementation, submitting our representation to the concerned authorities and media for brainstorming, and developing a redressal system to manage the human dog conflict, especially dog bites. For taking us through the history of animal birth control program, and today, I and many of us would have come uh, across and got led to the formulation of ABC rules and sharing with us a five-step strategy for action plan of ABC in Uttarakhand. Thank you so much, sir. Um, now, uh, I would like to request all the participants to kindly uh, raise their hands if they have any questions to ask from our speakers, Dr. Ilona Otter and Dr. Ashutosh Roshi. They can either raise hands or they can ask in the chat. I guess the session was really good that nobody has any questions. That is not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let it be, let it be. We are a team together and we will make a very good team. So we have someone over here. Hello. Hi, Shri. Yeah, hi. Um, thanks, Sonali. And uh, thanks for the talk, Dr. Joshi. Um, uh, one question I had to ask you was how how good is um, uh, responsible pet ownership? I mean, dog owning dog ownership practices in uh, Uttarakhand right now. Uh, in the sense, what proportion of dog owners keep, get their dogs vaccinated or uh, keep them confined all the time? Because I, as you mentioned, um, a lot of problems are caused by own dogs themselves. So I was just wondering what the what the level of um, say compliance to dog ownership rules is right now one thing i'll uh, relish to share here is that uh, basically our india is basically cow loving country the the, the the essence of animal welfare in our country that rotates around cow dog welfare is quite a new subject for uttarakhand and for our country as well so in 2001 this got this we got this landmark uh, rule framed by government of india in 2017, we got one more beautiful rule framed by government of India, that is uh, dog bitty rules from 2017. Then in 2018, we got this pet shop rules. So these legal provisions are quite new. So far as regular vaccination and deworming and taking care of the dogs is concerned, definitely pet owners are definitely very, very much attentive about, about it. But uh, going for sterilization of the uh, ABC surgery of the pet dogs, that is not a very common practice because Neither they were very well aware that if you are going, they are going for dog breeding, they have to get registered with the state annual report board under the dog breeding rules. That the law of the, of the land says it is a new new law. So that way awareness has yet to, yet to come. But yes, we have to keep pushing. We have to keep pushing that breeding dogs uh, at our home is not a very good practice until we are registered with state annual report board and we are very well we are aware about the protocols to be followed. Definitely, that is a new thing. But yes, so far vaccination, deworming, treatment, care—that is yes, that is that is a first step. I, I accept it. And so, <clears throat> if I could ask another question in that case, uh, as a continuation of that, if um, to your knowledge, you're saying that because vaccination practices are actually quite good in Uttarakhand, uh, do you know what the rabies burden is in Uttarakhand in in animals and in humans? Or is it well recorded or um, do you actually know that the number of cases are actually quite low? The one thing that uh, we have to accept that uh, there is wide gap between the data accepted by Health Ministry Government of India and the data being quoted by WHO. Okay, WHO says that every year in our country suffers uh, around 20,000 dog bite cases, in our 20,000 rabies cases in our country. Mm -hmm. There are around 55,000 uh, rabies cases across the globe, out of which 20,000 uh, rabies cases are in India. That is the data of WHO. And our health ministry says it is hardly 200. The basic uh, reason uh, between uh, this much gap is that, that I feel that uh, in every district of our country, we have got a rabies unit, district headquarter hospital. Mm -hmm. The rabies unit is having a separate room for the patient having uh, rabies. Once the patient is declared to have rabies, uh, most of such cases, they run away from the hospital. And such cases are called Lama cases, loss against medical advice. Okay. 
तो दे जस्ट गो बैक टू देयर होम एंड दे फील दैट इफ दे हैव टू डाई इट इज फॉर श्योर दे विल डाई एट देयर ओरिजिनल सेल्फ एंड दे विल दे विल ट्राई टू फुलफिल देयर लास्ट विश मैरिज ऑफ देयर सन मैरिज ऑफ देयर आई आई एक्सेप्ट इन द इयर 2013 एंड 14 वन ऑफ माय क्लास प्यून ही डाइड बिकॉज़ ऑफ दैट Uh, he was he was a, a pune at government veterinary hospital it happened but he he also died uh, at the lama case so what government of india yeah is government feels if a patient is dying because of rabies at the hospital that will accept his death because of rabies if it is a lama case how can you say that patient has died so that is the reason that there is a gap but if we go for lama cases definitely lama cases has to be there but uh, in the year 2014 15 a uh, dietitian health government of uttarakhand has informed us that there was no death because of rabies in that financial year that is this but yes 49 49000 dog bite cases were there that is that is the fact we have to accept okay thank you dr joshi sir hello ajit hello hi ajit hi 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 yeah okay uh, i have actually actually i have many questions but uh, uh, one um, main question i'll ask i'd like to ask is uh, all the rules and uh, laws we've discussed uh, so far uh, does it only apply to dogs or uh, for cats as well so i know it's a very basic question but uh, still uh, i'm just curious for cats recently in 2018 we got pet shop rule 2018 that okay. uh, that rule covers all the pet animals including cat hamster seal rat even puppies also but uh, this is oh. one that is uh, under the evaluation at the level of supreme court of india that is only for dog that is called animal birth control dog rule that is going to address basically state of uh, problem of the country that is the uh, okay so uh, the thing is um, uh, in my village i am from udupi karnataka and uh, in my my locality is bramavara and uh, in i i was planning to you know approach uh, my panchayat regarding abc so i uh, the thing is i have i had before this session i had no idea but uh, now i have uh, I, i got some ideas but uh, yeah i wanted to ask uh, like if i'm approaching the panchayat regarding abc can i uh, also try to include cats like along with dogs just uh, like uh, about the funding in so far as the stray animals are covered municipal body okay no no body. see uh, actually there are uh, there are people who uh, abandon the kittens as well that is the like in in village in villages in a lot, lot of the villages in my place at least uh, along with dogs they abandon kittens as well that is the main problem uh, yeah, that is why i had this question the thing is that as per the law of the land every owner mm-hmm. has got uh, authority to make decision about his animal the stray okay. animal they belong to the ecosystem and the ecosystem is owned by the local bodies that means municipal bodies or the panchayat so they can make uh, their uh, their panchayat or the nagarpalika or municipality they can make decision that if are they going to uh, opt for a stray dog uh, stray cat surgery or not if they feel that is okay. nobody is going to object nobody okay. can block them. okay okay thank you thank you uh, and uh, i can get your your and uh, another guest's uh, contact details right uh, in case we uh, i have any questions like uh, to, you can always approach me through uh, sonal okay this, yes, okay okay yeah thank you thank you so much share my email id and phone number uh, to sir please mr yeah. ajit katega yeah. please share yeah thank you yes, thank sir. you sir Uh, in between just an announcement those of you ha- who have not registered and directly joined in this webinar through zoom they can mail me their queries at sonali@fiapo.org and i can respond to that okay so if you need any information uh, from dr ilona order or from dr rashipur sushi you can contact me and i can provide you that information definitely i have also messaged my uh, mail id in the mess- uh, in the chat box yeah. okay what what one, one more yeah. uh, way uh, maybe there's that you can type uttarakhand animal welfare board on google and you can get my website or you can type animal welfare board of okay. 
uh, on Google and you can get their websites. And plenty of information are available on okay. these uh, government sites. That is it. Yes. Okay. Okay. I have messaged sir's main ID as well. Um, uh, sir, now we have Sirjana with us. Hello, Sirjana. I'm so much. Sirjana, you have to unmute yourself. Yes, yes. Hello, Joshi sir. Hello. So long to see you. So long to see you. Huh. Sirjana is very close friend since her group's days. And uh, since 2013, we were serving, we were struggling in the Kedanath disaster that we suffered in Uttarakhand. Uh, since that time, we are working together. Uh, yes, yes. Very sir. much, Sirjana, you are doing very well at FIAPO and uh, organizing these workshops in a wonderful manner. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And your uh, support and knowledge is, you know, really deep and we always appreciate and uh, all the, you know, information you shared today, really, I, I am so glad that you came and out of your such, such busy time, you took out, you know, time to come for the webinar. Right. This is, this is, we are, we are, we are, we are emotionally and passionately born to uh, make our best efforts to make a better team. And definitely FIAPO is doing a wonderful job in associating the guys together. That is, that is the need of the art. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, so, Sirjana, you had a few questions that you wanted to raise, the few concerns that you wanted to raise. Uh, yes, so, sir, I have a question because um, I went to Punjab some time back and I saw that condition of dogs is not very good and the ABC programs are not run there. There is no in the municipal corporations. So, uh, one specific city, but Hindi was just, uh, you know, asking the question that, how can we pursue these municipal corporations to start? Because as you mentioned, uh, they are always um, saying that there is shortage of funds or there is no facility. So all these excuses are there. So how can we, you know, really push them? Sridhana, one thing that we have to accept that uh, things doesn't happen as fast as we expect or as we dream. Uh, in our Uttarakhand also, we were struggling since 2008 to uh, 2014. It was a struggle of six years and there was so much judicial activism by plenty of judicial, uh, judicial activists, particularly Gauri Maliki and her team. They had been keeping on persuading and persuading, pushing and pushing and slowly and gradually, slowly and gradually we were able to persuade through the authority. But yes, I feel uh, you must uh, uh, stress for uh, constitution of state ABC monitoring committee. Once state ABC monitoring committee gets constituted, Secretary of Development is the boss for all the municipal commissioners of, of, of plus all the executive officers of all the municipal bodies of both the state. So once their ultimate boss, who is going to finalize their annual CR and who is going to finalize their annual transfer posting as well, once he is going to ask, it is not that easy for the authorities, the municipal body authorities, to uh, overlook the directions. So that way, uh, first thing that you must push, we all must push, that we must have a state ABC monitoring committee. And then once we get the state ABC mountain committee, then we can keep on pushing uh, through this line of action, uh, through uh, this, this way that this ABC program should be accepted by the state government as a state policy. Okay, okay. Sir, okay. On, sir on similar lines, we have we also have one question uh, wherein somebody has asked, can we include Nagar Nigam of Ram Nagar to an ABC program? Ramnagar is not a Nagar Nigam. Ramnagar is a Nagar Palika. Uh, we have got uh, two more Nagar Nigams uh, in our Uttarakhand. That is, one is uh, Kodwar and one is Rishikesh. Uh, Ramnagar is definitely a big city. Definitely it requires to be covered. Uh, final decision is to be made by government of Uttarakhand. As Ramnagar is, we can say, it is not a hilly area. It is, we can say, it's a Bhavar area. N neither hilly area nor plain area. It's a Bhavar area. And I don't feel that it is more than uh, 40 or 45 kilometers away from Haldwani. So once we get that ABC campus constructed at Haldwani, uh, we can cover Ramnagar from Haldwani uh, as well. 
or uh, we are constructing one abc campus at, at kashipur perhaps from kashipur we can cover it as a, a satellite municipality because for investment of 1 and 1/2 crore rupees for every uh, nagarpalika every municipality it is not thought that is the first state government we don't have that that ample of funds available my annual budgetary allocation is around 2 and 1/2 crore rupees or 3 crore rupees so out of that money uh, we have to go for construction of abc campus and implementation of the program so that way we don't have ample funds government of india awbi is having no funds as on date for program so that way uh, it will be difficult for us to take up ramnagar but definitely we can cover ramnagar either from kashipur or uh, the, through hadwani definitely we can cover uh, another person hmm. sir another person has asked that uh, she has been trying to set up shirdi uh, set up uh, abc program in the municipality of shirdi but from the last 6 years the department is ignoring the, uh, them and uh, she also tried to seek help from sai baba temple but uh, nothing has happened from the last 6 years so she is seeking some suggestions how should she, she approach the authorities for establishing the abc program nahi wo they are two the facility center there are two three ways once as on date we have got citations of honorable supreme court of india hai na or citations of orders of from honorable supreme court of india if she is mighty enough she can file a case in high court or even she can file a case in state human rights commission but before filing a case at any platform she must give her proper representation to each and every authority to the municipal corporation to the secretary state government of urban department to the director of development of the state government and then she has to keep on pursuing because things doesn't happen as fast as we dream or as we expect it takes time even in, in our uttarakhand our activists they move to high court they move to supreme court they, they move to state human rights commission they move to each and every platform that was available they move to media they they made all sort of press but still it, it took 6 years 6 years so it is all about the commitment and information and knowledge and i'm very, very much thank you uh, include in the representation ha huh, that i have covered uh, including my presentation how we have to move forward i think that mm-hmm. is going to be sop this is the only way we have to uh, pursue with the state government authorities kitna doc how much doc by cases were there acha and how much investment was there for the anti rabies vaccination and how much investment was was there for the purchase of the logistics and management of the staff and how much doc by cases were there in the animals then we can calculate impact financial impact that is being borne by the state government that is being borne by the municipality we can ask them this must spend it already you are making you can compensate it uh, by making some budget allocation for this program after 20 25 years you will be having no such a sort of problem it is a long term process immediately you will not be getting that even immediately you will not be getting a stoppage of the dog bite cases dog bite cases are going to remain there but yes population will uh, stoppage will be there so that way we have to move forward Uh, there is another question um, sir is there any other okay ha sonali there is a question uh, what is the appropriate age and weight of a dog puppy fit for surgery dr irona can cover it better dr irona it is your clear question irona as per the module filed by the wbi in the supreme court of india at the age that has been recommended years that is the age of 6 months before 6 months we cannot go for abc surgery so that is the module that that has been prescribed by the module and uh, so far as the body weight is concerned body weight healthy body weight that varies from breed to breed so depending upon it will be a discretion of veterinary doctor that he has to make a uh, make a decision that he has to go for a surgery or not but ideal age is 6 months that is the law that how can we access the, okay uh, so sir uh, i have one question so uh, many times we receive uh, uh, queries such as nagar nigam uh, took the dogs and when the uh, dogs were dropped back in the same location the one dogs ki uh, jo physical condition thi they were not healthy and in a few days some of the dogs died as well so aise cases mein kya kar sakte hain like is it is it because of the way the dogs were sterilized or uh, it can be uh, you know after post partum surgery so oh, sorry post surgery so kya cheez hai jab bahut sare dogs after the surgery unki death ho jati hai 
it will have to accept that skill of a veterinary surgeon doing mass scale surgery is really very important a passion and dedication of the annual organization is also very very important and that is the reason uh, how we we caught the dog how we handled the dog how we went for surgery how we go, uh, went for post operative care uh, how we released the dog in the same locality from where it was picked uh, these things are very very important and that is the reason that if you go by the abc rules you will find at least at 15 places where it has been very passionately mentioned that there is very important role of the uh, daily dog feeders animal lovers animal organizations spc representatives that has been mentioned again and again because uh, while these rules were being designed by government of india it was very sincerely considered by the uh, law recommending authorities that uh, animal lovers animal activists have to play very important role and i strongly believe that they have to have close association with the abc implementing, implementing organization uh, except operation theater uh, they should be given access to uh, interact with the animals but it has to be in positive manner a problem uh, solving manner not in a finger raising manner because ultimately we are there to uh, resolve the issues not to create the issues so that that way we have to move lekin yes definitely skill of doctor is very very important uh, that is plus uh, fate of the animal is also very very important, important. plenty of uh, times you find that it meets with accident it meets with meets with uh, a misfortune that is also one important we have to accept uh, dr elona you were saying something Uh, yeah, no, I, I I know that there were some uh, some people sending a message asking if I'm around to answer questions, and I just wanted to say that I am. I just have a poor connection, but um, and so I'm not having my video on. But I'm here if anybody has a question. Ah, Doctor Irona, the question was that: What is the ideal age and body weight for the uh, going for the surgery of a dog? Okay, so. Um, uh, In a case of a male dog, the answer is reasonably simple, as in um, the testicles should be down. Now, this is usually, like you said, around maybe five six months. Uh, similarly, female dog, well, female dog uh, from the anatomic perspective can be operated uh, also young before the age of five six months. You know, somewhere like four five three four five months. but i find the bigger question the mo most important is really the body weight and um and so say um a 6 kilos roughly 6 kilos uh, uh, would be around the minimum 5 6 kilos however it is not you can't really put an exact um uh, sort of a weight uh, weight limit there a, a lot depends on the skills Uh, of the vet team and 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 also if uh, if if the surgeon is is not sort of not very uh probably not very confident with the anesthesia then maybe it's better that they'll do little all the dogs but uh, so in that way uh, it's it's really up to the up to the confidence um of the surgeon of course we do anesthesia and surgery for much younger animals as well sometimes if needed you know for say a fracture or or for some other reason than spay neuter so so um it is really up to the vet's decision i i i think all these kind of uh, uh uh these kind of decisions have to be done by the vet in question we can't set rules from outside that we expect them each vet to be able to um each place to be um how do i say that like like yeah it's it's up to the vet really to decide on this um so we can't say that oh you can't operate a 5 kilo dog if you have a confident surgeon who can do it um you know if that makes sense so now you should ask elona about the uh, mortality after the post surgery uh, after the release ask this question again sorry sorry what uh, so so elona i have a question so uh, many times like, we have also uh, noticed it whenever a street dog after surgery is left back in the community uh, a few of them they die they die uh, post the surgery but can be the reason of it uh, how soon after the surgery these deaths have happened uh, so in my case one dog died within 15 days or like 10 to 15 days another died within one month to one and a half month mm. so these are so far after the surgery that you cannot connect them to the surgery in any way um of 
another question which you would need in the canal in the in the surgery facility in the canals because again picking up infections like distemper uh, is of course very common and and very easily done in in hospital settings so and and of course these dogs might have picked it up after being released as well so uh, any dog see these type of deaths that are several days after the uh, um, after the surgery are um, uh, without any without any sign of actual surgical site complication you know so if their surgical wounds were looking fine then there is no way to connect these deaths to the surgery it just it just does happen that animals pick up other infections as well and and uh, or poisons or you know whatever so without really investigating doing postmortems and all that you know it's quite hard to say why they died really but but a lot of you know we do see that um yeah distemper poisonings you know um uh, other 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 infectious diseases of course can can all all, all um get them but i wouldn't i wouldn't associate these to surgeries in any way no Okay. Uh, See the surgical, the surgical procedure. The surgical, the surgical procedure, spay neuter surgical procedure, is basically so short and simple, and and they recover from the anesthesia, uh, you know, within 24 hours. So anything that happens one and a half months after that is just not related to the surgery. Oh, okay. Um, uh, there is one more question that someone has asked that Udit, Udit from Chandigarh has asked, if I'm not wrong. So uh, he is asking how to get animal birth control implemented in smaller council towns or cities, non-corporation cities. Is this for Joshi or for Dr. Joshi or for me? Uh, Ma'am, it is for Dr. Joshi. I would think so, yeah. Uh, actually, Sonali, the law of the land is the same for municipal corporation, for municipality, or for the Nagar Panchayat. The law of the land is safe, even for the Jilla Panchayat, or for the Chetri Panchayat, or for the Gram Panchayat. The law of the land is the same. In the same manner, we have to move forward. That's why I'm saying that if we start moving through state government authorities, it is always a better model, because state government authorities do have authority to direct their juniors to implement the law. And they are there to provide them some funding support as well. Getting my point. Because plenty of time, the small municipal bodies or small gram panchayats, they don't have sufficient funds. As we are doing in Uttarakhand, ABC campus is being constructed by the fund for state government. Around 60% of the funds are being contributed by state government. Dog vans and logistics support is the, uh, funds uh, for it is being provided by state government. Only 55% uh, of the impl implementation part uh, that is again being borne by state government. Only 45% of the implementation part, running cost, that is being borne by the local body. So that way, I I always persuade, I always demand that we must go, go for, we must persuade for participatory funding by the state government, by the central government, and by the local body. That would be the proper model. I strongly believe in that line. So, sir, he is also asking to share rules on participation of civil society members in animal birth control monitoring committee, and also if there are any rules, suspect or circular on public visiting hours at ABC centers. So he has asked two questions. Can I can I comment on the public visiting hours? Yes, ma'am. Please. Yeah. So. Um, uh, I don't think there are any actual rules on that, but my view, my view on this is that the more public and open we have our places, I'm not saying that public should be allowed to come into the operation theater, but it's really important that public can visit um, at, during the working hours and can see um, uh, and observe, you know, the action ac activities happening and to actually bring their own dogs, you know, into the into the center. I think this is really important for the for the transparency of the work and and for um, you know for for publicity and everything. So um, our APC centers should not be um, you know somehow closed from from public or or um, yeah that's um, um, that's my recommendation on that for sure. Okay. Sir, would uh, you like to say something? Uh, 
I believe that as I have presented in my presentation as well that uh, we must uh, most of the time plenty of people from media or from a general public they are keen to know how the things are happening why things are happening how or uh, what is the uh, protocol uh, that is being adopted so if we can provide those general informations uh, key how to why the program is being implement, implemented what is our action plan how we are implementing these things must be communicated in local language uh, through the banners and posters at our abd center that's outside walls so most of time 60 to 70 to 80 percent people they get the basic idea what is really being done inside and once they go inside they get an idea this is to be implemented so th this is this is to be uh, to be seen and verified so i i i i'll say that this has been reported even in abc rules but yes we have not to invite the nuisance. There are plenty of people who are nuisance that we have not to invite, not to permit. They can definitely public awareness, public education, education of the media, education of the masses, very, very important. They must learn how we are implementing the program. What is our action plan? What is the law of the land? How we are implementing it? So that has to be this. Uh, Dr. Ilona, this question is to you. Uh, if the dog is lactating, can the sterilization still take place? Uh, okay, very good question. So, technically, yes. So, so from the surgery technique point of view, there is no. Uh, uh, well, the, if if it's heavily lactating, yes, there is a, there is an issue of of uh, um, um, you might have milk contamination coming into the incision if if you are not you know careful with that. However, it is possible to do it in such a way that the contamination is avoided. Uh, but the bigger question, of course, is that where are those puppies at that time? So, uh, so that's that's the one uh, one point where I uh, I have you have to be a little, little cautious, as in, um, are you having the puppies along or or um, or only the mother? Because obviously, then you shouldn't be taking a lactating mother if if there are small tiny puppies somewhere that need that mother. Um, unless you have the puppies as well. But but from the surgery technical uh, perspective. It is possible, uh, a bit bit more difficult, but possible. Uh, one question I have is that, uh, is this a misconception, a myth that uh, many people, uh, especially people who have pedigree dogs, I'm not talking about stray dogs over here, they raise that, you know, sterilization of dogs, they decrease the life of a dog. Decrease, as in decrease the length of the life, or what, what? What do you mean with decrease? The length of the life, yes, the length of the life. No, that is not true at all. So sterilization uh, has lots of health benefits. For uh, obviously, it prevents pyometra, which is a which is one big killer of pedigree dogs, uh, because you know if if you have end up having complicated pyometra and you can't get your dog operated in time, then that can be really really dangerous. Um, so uh, and 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 then of course you know there are some other um, uh, like mammary tumors um, uh, where the incidence is reduced when the dog is neutered early. So uh, sterilization has a lot of health benefits, uh, and um, and and no, I don't see why it would decrease um, um, the length of the life. All right. Um, I don't see any more questions over here. Hi. Um... I just would like to ask the participants. Yeah, hi, Shay. Uh, hi, sorry. Um, I actually had a question. This was to both uh, the speakers, but I specifically wanted to ask Ilona as well. So you mentioned that um, if animal birth control is actually conducted in an efficient manner, so without all these leakages, uh, so um, uh, the right number of female dogs are sterilized, you focus also on pregnant dogs, uh, and it's you have sufficient funds and you have sufficient trained staff and you, you conduct it for, systematically for over, a, over a long period of time. Yeah, please go ahead. Sorry, I, I was having... Sorry, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I'll just repeat my question. So it was basically yeah. if ABC is implemented in an efficient manner, obviously you will have the dog population reducing and stabilizing at a much lower level. But then yeah. doesn't that raise the same problem, essentially, that if the environment uh, continues to provide the same uh, resources and support to, uh, they provide more resources to support a larger dog population, then doesn't that mean that you're basically stuck with doing animal birth control forever? Because 
um, if you have stray dogs and you stop birth control, then the population will go up. So shouldn't there actually be a focus on more than just birth control to actually control the stray dog population? In a sense, I mean, I, what I'm asking is, uh, shouldn't we be able to get to a stage where we don't have any stray dogs in our society eventually? Um, okay, yes, excellent question. Um, so obviously, the uh, uh, one of the underlying problems for the large stray dog population in India is the fact that there's a suitable habitat. So we have a suitable climate throughout the year, we have a huge human population, which means the number of unwanted pet dog puppies that end up, you know, abandoned or, you know, whatever is also very high. And we have ample uh, um, source of resources for food, you know, so we've got all the, uh, the, the restaurant and the household, uh, you know, edible waste uh, that, is, that is all over the place and, and all these chicken shops and, and uh, butcher shops in the markets that produce lots and lots of waste. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a good habitat for the, for the dogs. And, and ultimately, if we want to reduce um, um, uh, free roaming unwanted dog population, we need to be looking into this habitat and, and, and basically waste management. Um, I, have, uh, I have worked uh, uh, shortly in, um, in Malawi and uh, on a rabies vaccination program some years back. And one striking difference um, there, uh, was the fact that um, uh, though uh, Malawi has equally dense human population like India, though it's a small country, but human population density is high, there is a very high, um, there is not much, you know, not great waste management and, um, uh, and climate is like India, you know, suitable for stray dogs to be around outside all the time. But you just wouldn't, you didn't have that type of street dog population as you have in, in, in India. And one of the differences, one of the differences there is that Malawi, and, Malawi is a very poor country. So there is no edible waste much, like nothing edible is really wasted. So the kind of, you know, chicken shops and, and butcher shop stalls uh, like we have in the markets are not there. So the, the habitat is different. And, and then that ultimately also reflects on the, on the numbers on the, on the free roaming dogs. So, um, uh, uh, so these things go hand in hand. So uh, as vets, we are focused on doing spay neuter, doing dog population control via effective surgery programs, but overall municipalities uh, uh, should be looking into this um, waste management and, 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 and basic hygiene. And in that way, reduce the, whether it's any kind of, whether it's dogs, rats, cats, monkeys, you know, whatever uh, animals we may have eating the edible waste. None of that would be there if, if, if there was a situation of no edible waste on the roads. Does that answer your question? I'm not actually sure. Uh, I would like to contribute on this, uh, on this topic. Uh, we have not to er eradicate the stray dogs. Stray dogs are integral part of our ecosystem. Those are scavenging animals. Those are required. If we remove the stray dogs from our ecosystem, technically speaking, then, then rodents will come up and there will be more complications. There is one citation from Surat. It was theirs. And when mass scale dogs were killed, uh, there was an outbreak of plague because of those rodents. They came uh, above the channels on the surface. So stray dogs, that, there, there is a food chain in our ecosystem. And each species is controlling the population of another species. Thing was that, that we had poor waste management and as the population dynamics of stray dog goes, that if there is better availability of protein, carbohydrate, fat, vitamins, and minerals, that is available in our kitchen waste, that is available in our slaughterhouse waste, that is available in our meat shop waste, definitely those stray bitches are going to have better pregnancy management. Their fecundity is going to be uh, more, their parasite is going to be more, the viability of pups is going to be more. So we have not to eradicate the dog. As the law of the land says that 70% of the stray dogs are to be covered. There are municipalities who are covering around 90% or 95%. But we have not to eradicate them. So far as Uttarakhand is concerned, I'm telling you that it is a very important animal in the food chain. In 62% of the cases, for the leopards, uh, those are the wild animals. In uh, Uttarakhand is almost whole state is in, uh, is in the forest area. So in 62% of the cases, for the leopards, the prime food, a uh, first choice of food, uh, is an animal in the weight group of 20 or 25 kg body weight. That is the stray dog. 
if stray dogs are there definitely there will be less conflict between humans and children and ladies and leopards there will be less attack on them so we don't want to eradicate the stray dogs those are not mosquitoes we want them in our ecosystem but yes we we want to control their population that is that is that is the theme of the abc rules so so in response to both your answers in that case then if the situation is that we will continue to have dog populations at a lower level let's say so abc is actually completely effective and you um are able to keep the population low uh, but not eradicate them then doesn't that necessarily mean that you are uh, you are left to conduct rabies vaccination campaigns forever because obviously if you have to control rabies in the dog population you have to conduct mass vaccination and if you have yeah, a large strain of sorry yeah uh, Yeah, I mean, rabies. Yeah. yeah, that's that's true. I mean, rabies. But see, countries that have uh, eradicated rabies are still vaccinating all their dogs uh, every year. So, vaccination of dogs against rabies is something we have to keep doing as long as we have dogs in this world. But when we do effective ABC, uh, the turnover of the dogs is less, and therefore. we are able to reach a higher percentage of the dog population with our annual vaccination drives and a higher percentage of the dogs have owners and therefore they are accessible for the rabies vaccination via their owners um rather than you know going and catching street dogs uh for vaccination so by doing more spay neuter we are shifting the balance from totally ownerless dogs to more owner dogs and therefore dogs that are more easily accessible for rabies vaccination and but rabies vaccination is there forever that is that is the way to keep rabies away i mean we have to keep vaccinating dogs against rabies because that's that's what every country does um even though they haven't had rabies you know for decade decades mm. from my understanding uh, rabies isn't actually vac- isn't compulsory rabies vaccination isn't compulsory in the uk for example isn't it oh well uk uh, as an island of course it's an island you know uh, the, yeah countries you know in specific circumstances like an island as the uk is a different thing but but uh, continental europe you know all pet dogs are vaccinated against rabies so it is owners it's owner responsibility it's a pet it's a, it's a dog uh, ownership question and and uh, dog owners responsibility to have the dogs vaccinated and people do that they also distribute oral rabies um, vaccination in the forest to um um you know which is still um, i mean that happens in eastern europe okay thank you i'm so sorry to interrupt now uh, but i would like to say that now we have only 2 minutes for this webinar uh sonali uh, i just have one question uh, i asked it earlier as well uh, to mr hello yes yes sir yes sir yes sir, uh, sir uh, basically uh, this is in reference to abc center abc operations happening in chandigarh uh, in the monitoring committee uh, we do not have any civil society participants since last 5 years so uh, is there a specific rule which cites uh, that you know we can have some civil so- so participation to improve abc especially in the monitoring committee uh so uh, if you can just uh, share your views on that and some some sir uh, what abc so the local uh, local uh, monitoring committee by uh, mc the committee in that local monitoring committee we have to give representation to the animal welfare organizations and representative of the district spc district spc is a statutory body district level statutory body under the pc act as awbi is statutory body under the pc act that is the national statutory body similarly district spc is again statutory body at the district level under the same act so what i say there is provision for inclusion of the spc representative in the monitoring committee of the municipal body so that way since the mayor or, or the chairman of the municipality or mayor of the municipal corporation is the head of the municipal level monitoring committee you can submit your request letter to mayor or the a chairman of the um, uh, municipal body uh, he 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 can consider your uh, that thing or second way maybe you can take membership of district spca 
you can uh, contract your deputy director of investmentry of the concerned district uh, he is the member secretary for district spca you can submit your application if if you are member of spca automatically you get uh, nomination for the uh, to be included in the municipal level uh, monitoring committee that is that is the uh, law of the land that is uh, helping us supporting us thank you thank you so much so thank you uh thank you so much dr ira and thank you so much dr ashutosh joshi oh thank you for addressing us on this very crucial topic on animal birth control and covering the major uh, portion of it for example the effectiveness for example how abc works for example what uh, is the rule of the land uh, regarding abc how abc can be implemented which dogs are to be sterilized and especially uh, dr rona for explaining us uh, why abc is ethical and uh, ethics versus you know uh, the, as we see many complaints on uh, the animal rights so thank you so much uh, uh, everybody for joining and thank you so much uh, to our speakers for joining thank you very much thank you sonali thank you dr rona thank you sajana